On show 586, LG Chem making cells for Tesla, Daimler's end of gas engines and China winning the EV race. Those stories and many more coming up on the show today. That would be the show for Friday 20th of September. My name is Martin Lee. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to the show where I go through every EV story that I can find and whittle it down to 15, 20 minutes of just the news you need to know about. Ultimate time saver, we like to call it. Thank you to the team at myev.com for helping me make this show. If you're in the USA, it's how so many people these days are connecting with buyers and sellers, uh, dealers and services on there as well. A recent upgrade to a version 2 of that, if you haven't checked it out in a while, a good reason to revisit myev.com. Well, according to this article that's coming from a Korean website called The Elec, they call themselves the number one tech news website in Korea. I haven't seen this widely reported everywhere, but they say that LG Chem, and of course, a Korean company, this is a Korean tech website, you wonder if they have got some sources, some ins. LG Chem has begun to mass produce batteries for the Model 3, which is being made in China at the Nanjing plant Gigafactory 3, in other words, according to industry sources. Tesla will be using LG Chem's 2170 cells, that's the form factor, which of course goes in every other Model 3, uh, using the kind of chemistry that is known as NCM, and uh, that's the NCM811 chemistry, a nickel proportion of 80%. LG Chems, uh, well, the, the, the company previously supplied NCM 811 cells to other things like electric buses. Uh, this is the first time they are supplying uh, Tesla, say the sources until now. Tesla's been so, uh, uh, using Panasonic almost exclusively, apart from the very, very early Roadsters, I think it was. Uh, however, since then, uh, Panasonic, of course, with the uh, Gigafactory in Sparks, Nevada, a fantastic partnership that really has allowed Tesla to grow. That uses the NCA type of chemistry, uh, another type of high nickel cathode material. LG Chem convinced Tesla to switch to the NCM811 cells uh, based on... Uh, the ability to deliver the driving distance per charge. It also hinted that it may be, may be able to begin uh, mass-producing NCMA batteries even higher in uh, nickel beginning in 2022. This is, of course, a story coming, coming from a, a Korean website, and uh, we will continue to look into this. We do know that with the Tesla Model 3 being made at Gigafactory 3 in China, that they were going to expand their battery or their cell supply contracts uh, further than than Panasonic, uh, but I didn't know that LG had uh, signed, sealed, delivered and all that kind of stuff and that actually that that was public news. So like I say, it's a single source and we'll continue to research it, but that's the news for today. The other big bit of news, which again, don't get carried away with this, but it's also fantastic news. Daimler just announced it's halting all future development of gasoline engines. Uh, the automaker will solely focus on EVs from here on out. That implies Mercedes-Benz taking the same approach as inside EVs. In an article that was translated from Auto, Motor and Sport, so we are going on Google Translate here, uh, Daimler is currently bringing the latest generation of internal combustion engines to market in various models, like the new inline six engine for the E-Class, the S-Class, the SUVs. This generation could well be the last. Auto, Motor and Sport says that this bit of news comes from Daimler's development chief, Marcus Schaefer, and he suggests that Daimler roadmap currently has no plan for future gasoline engine development, though he notes the outlook could change. However, the focus now is on electric drive with gas and diesel engines on the back burner. So that taken at face value, well, that top line, that headline does make it sound like Daimler is making a wholesale shift from gas engines to EV. And I, I'm not pouring cold water on the fire here. I would point out that they have made numerous recent statements with their support for the future of gas and diesel engines, how it's an important part of the company. And this article doesn't say that they are moving away from piston engines to electric drive. It's simply about 
future development. And so if you are thinking about where emissions targets are going to be in 2030, so near as damn it 10 years away, and you think that actually the average life cycle for an engine development program could be to 8 to 10 years, actually these engines that they have developed could well be the last, you know, they're not going to be making a new combustion engine that takes over from this current generation from 2030 onwards. So the timescales are big because when you've got an engine development plan, you then need to tool up and then make those engines to get your return on investment over an extended period of time, 8 to 10 to 12 years. So are they going to stop building gas and diesel engines? No, they are a key part to Daimler's midterm future. However, this is good news. I just think some... If you've seen this headline today, by the way, you may have seen some outlets getting a little bit carried away with it. It's why I chose Inside EVs to report there, because theirs was very measured, very balanced. Some of the mainstream outlets that didn't, didn't dig too deeper, they're just after the clicks, were saying, well, Daimler's giving up on piston engines and moving to EVs. This is fantastic news that they are going to develop EV powertrains and, and invest more in EV powertrains. It doesn't mean that they are making a wholesale shift away from fossil engines. There's a subtle difference, but this is indeed a piece of good news. Some people are putting it down as the, you know, the announcement of the year or the announcement of the decade. I, I, I'm not sure I'd go that far. But Elon Musk did go out of his way to uh, either reply or retweet or quote retreat, retweet to say um, that this day will go down in history. Uh, so he chose uh, to uh, to go down that route of saying, hey, this is a huge announcement. Well done, Daimler. So that was Elon's reaction. Well, China's gas demand, after doubling from 2010 to 2019, is now essentially flat. Uh, China's diesel demand, meanwhile, peaked several years ago. And in China, diesel's been on the way down. But that's an amazing stat, isn't it? From 2010 to 2019, China's gas demand doubled. I can't think of, of you know, what that would be like over the last 10 years, a developed economy, you know, like a US or a, a Western European economy, literally, you were using twice as much gas as you were just 10 years ago. Well, that's what happened in China, as their car market, their automotive market was just absolutely flying. Some say it's stagnating, but it's I'm not sure. It's definitely slowed down. Uh, mostly China's sales of what they call new energy vehicles are mostly electric. They haven't really gone down the route of hybrids. There are some small number of natural gas combustion engines. Uh, 1.5 million cars in China, which are called new energy vehicles. Sales of all passenger vehicles uh, has already peaked at 25 million and on the way down. Uh, the peak was 2018. Uh, last check was about 22 million annual sales for automotive, whereas EVs are on the rise. And the story of China is one that's dominated by the domestic automakers. There's only one company in the top 10, if you look at the percentage of passenger electric vehicles, uh, that isn't Chinese, and that would be Mitsubishi. Two Chinese automakers really gobble up a lot of the share. Uh, that would be... Uh, Cherry and or Cherry and BYD, uh, but there are of course many others. There's JAC, BAIC, uh, Jiangjing, Geely, WM Motor. Oh, there's just so many more, and that is the story of why China is embracing EVs. Uh, diesel sales down, gas sales down, overall cars down, but in every possible metric, electric cars soaring still in China. A fascinating market that I think is underreported. So as and when I can, I like to um, sprinkle, I like to sprinkle some China news. I know you might, might be, a, you might tune in, tune in for the Tesla news on this show or, or like, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the fast cars. But, uh, but China is a market that we need to keep an eye on because there's a lot of action happening there. Well, electric cars, say CNET, electric cars have years before they reach cost parity with vehicles with an inter internal combustion engine. But Volkswagen 
wants to scrap the waiting game. Instead, it's looking at an apples-to-apples approach for its EVs. And that's the word from Volkswagen's CEO of America, Scott Keogh, according to Roadshow by CNET. The CEO told Green Car Reports in an interview they did on Tuesday uh, that their goal is price their electric cars comparably with their fossil fuel powered models in their lineup in this case he was saying uh, we're talking about the id4 which is formerly the cross and the id4 is the first car coming to north america of course you won't get the id3 that we get here in europe a smaller car the id4 a crossover style suv will sell very well in the USA market, and it will start VW's electric car assault on the US market. The ID4 will be sized similarly to a um, a Tiguan, I think is the best comparison, with a price point to match the traditional car. Of course, you have to remember that unlike Tesla, who hit their uh, EV uh, credit limit, and now your, your tax credit is already tapering down, it'll be gone by the end of the year, of course. VW have a long way to go until uh, they hit their 200,000th vehicle. So, of course, you'll get your uh, tax incentive, uh, your federal, uh, your your credits, but, of course, in some markets as well, there may be some ZEV incentives. And so taking those into account, that's probably how VW are getting to the stage of saying we want price parity. Nice thing to say that you want it, different thing to start doing it. But as always, we like to give... EV, future EV makers, the benefit of the doubt on this podcast. And, well, let's hope they crack it. And they do sell the ID4 in North America for an equivalent price to a Tiguan. We'll see. Uh, Tata Motors is working on a range of... Uh, by the way, that sounded very cynical, didn't it? I'm not, I'm not being cynical about it. Just, we'll see. As in, you only, you're only able to do that with scale. So uh, good luck, VW, because you can only do that price parity by making EVs in a hell of a big number. So otherwise you're selling them at a loss. So we'll see. (laughs) Let's move to India. And Tata Motors is working on a range of electric passenger vehicles, including SUVs, based on its new e-vehicle technology platform, it's called the Ziptron platform. And the company, again, we don't talk about Indian EVs too much, but Tata Motors is producing EV versions of its Tiger hatchback already. It's going to launch its first EV vehicle on the Ziptron powertrain uh, in the last quarter of next year, where there'll be three or four products in the following year based on that EV platform, according to India Times, even though the Indian government's e-mobility focus is rightly or wrongly all about public transport, and you could say that actually some of the stinkiest diesel vehicles are the ones used for public transport, so that probably is a, a pretty good strategy. Uh, the Ziptron platform and the range that are built on that for Tata Motors will focus on personal buyers, not targeting volumes, but a more progressive move towards e-mobility. In terms of electric commercial mobility, Tata Motors will not only get into all electric buses, but also also focus on last mile cargo options. And I'll pop a link to Times of India. India Times in the show notes if you want to read more. Talking about last mile cargo tomorrow on the show. I'll be recapping all of the big Rivian slash Amazon news. And again, you have to go deep into that to make sure that you read past the headlines. The headlines are stunning, by the way. Just need to be careful to dig into that to work out what time frame they're talking about, but I'll bring you the news tomorrow. Uh, Right, a couple of final stories then. Uh, There will soon be a new car share player in Metro Vancouver. Its name is Sumo, S-U-M-O, and it it stands for Shared Use Mobility Company. But shouldn't that be Shared Use Mobility Operator, if it's going to be Sumo? Anyway, according to Daily Hive, a smartphone app for Sumo will be ready next summer. Initial fleet of vehicles, they've ordered 100 Hyundai... Ioniques, the pure electrics, I should say, uh, 50 Konas, and they've also ordered a VW ID range, Audi e-tron, um, Teslas, and they will add to their fleet the Ford F-150 electric truck as the all-electric vehicle fleet in Vancouver. And the number of hubs grow. The business model, they say, will shift to an intra-hub pickup and return model. And when the fleet size reaches critical mass, Sumo will become a regional free float service, whatever one of those is. But good luck 
with their free floaters. And finally, a really lovely positive piece of news to end the podcast today on this edition. Auto shop classes have been dwindling in the United States as the high-budget course is simply too expensive for many schools to run auto shop classes. In the case of a Memorial High School in West New York, though, in New Jersey, the shop teacher Ron Grossinger witnessed the elective course go from six teachers down to two. But he recognised that auto shop classes are an important hands-on learning experience for the students that want to take those classes. So he found a way to keep it going and keep it relevant. According to Car Buzz, in 2008, he approached the school with a new idea. What about teaching students to convert gas cars to EVs? Well, since he began and got the green light for the scheme, the programme began in 2008 and it's now expanded to four teachers and the school has added an after-school automotive programme as well. There are also more female students than when the programme began. And if you'd like to find out more, link in the show notes as always. Just a fantastic Feel good story to end the podcast today about a school deciding to run courses, classes for their students, all about EV conversion. I call that forward thinking and well done them. Right, question of the week. Get yours in and I'll read it out on Sunday's show. Thanks to myev.com for setting this. What's your dream EV road trip? You can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Well, there are 253 patrons of the show that uh, fund this show. Thank you, Phil Roberts of Electric Future and Brad Crosby and Avid Technology, our premium partners. And if you'd like to get the new shows as I release them, uh, you can get a little uh, alert. If you sign up to Patreon, uh, it emails you. There's a new show uh, if you want those emails. And otherwise, sign up on your podcast apps and uh, you'll get the show before anybody else for free. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.